By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And in this episode, we are bringing you magic from the Afton Troll Cup. That's a tournament organized by Ron Dutchman. And it's a tournament with international flair. And we can also see that by the look of the players that we have today. We've got Dutchman Rob, and he's playing against the American player Dave Firth Bard. And I think all of you know him already, or everybody who's kind of into old school probably is familiar with the name. One of the many things that he organizes are the Summer Derby and the Winter Derby. Fantastic online tournaments, tournaments that I've joined in the past as well. It's just great. And I just want to thank you, Dave, for everything that you do for the community. Now, if you want to get in touch with Dave or have questions about his deck, you can try to reach out to him via Twitter. So I'll make sure there's a Twitter link in the description below. So if you want to know more about Dave and what he does for the community, if you don't know that already, you can contact him via Twitter, which is in the description below. Now let's uh, let's talk about the decks. What kind of games are we actually going to see? Well, we are going to see two aggro decks battling it out. And I must say Dave's deck looks very, very interesting. It's a Mie Jin Berserk Bull Lightning deck. And he is exactly, I said that all, right? That all comes together in one deck. And he's taking on, I guess, this classic aggro mono red deck. But, well, I'm saying classic. It's actually not classic at all. There's some really cool inclusions in this mono red deck. It's not what you expect. First of all, he's playing with two often trolls, which is really cool. Uh, but before I go into the deck tech, I just want to point out that in the description below, you can find timestamps, and one of them uh, reads MTG Games. So if you want to go straight to the games, you can click on there. That will take you straight to the games, and you can skip this deck deck section. I know that some of you also enjoy to first watch the game and then check out the deck deck or just skip the deck deck altogether. It's all good. I just want to point out that for the people that are interested in the deck deck, I've got deck pictures of both of these decks and I can tell you they're definitely worth it. Um, let's first go and have a look at the deck of Dave Firth Bart. Let's go. And here we see the deck Double Down by Dave. And um, the first thing that you really notice here are the creatures there left in the middle. I mean, look at those powerful creatures. Bull Lightning, three red for a six one that can attack the turn it comes into play. Of course, at the end of turn, it destroys itself. Mie Jin, three red for a six three body on the battlefield. But when you attack, you have to flip a coin. And if you're correct, the, the attack continues. If you're not correct, it stays tapped and nothing else happens, right? So you gotta flip a coin every time. And then we see four Juggernaut, of course, that sort of beautiful classic aggro creature, four, four, five, three, that will have to attack every single turn. It does have summoning sickness and so does the Miagen. Now we do see those three Berserks start in the middle and they make perfect sense when you have such an aggressive lineup going for you. Can you imagine Berserking a Bull Lightning? You can actually deal 12 trample damage and also if you're Mie Jin, you can attack and you can make it a 12-3. Of course, you got to win the coin flip or else it doesn't attack. But you know what? It doesn't really matter if it's not attacking because look at the cards here in the middle, the two beautiful swords. Sword of the Ages is an artifact from Legends and um, you can only, it comes into play tapped and then you can use it to turn after obviously when it untaps. And then you can tap it and you can sack an X amount of creatures. So it can be one creature, two, three, depending on the amount of creatures you've got on the battlefield. And then the sword deals damage to any target um, that is equal to the amount of power that you've sacrificed. So just to give you an example, if you've got a Juggernaut and a Mie Jin together, that's 11 power. So if you sack them, you can deal 11 damage to any target. Well, that can be your opponent as well. But what if you Berserk? the Mie Jin and the Juggernaut, then, oh, wait a minute, the power doubles, and then you can use the sword. So you can kind of see where Dave uh, Dave wants to go to with this deck. Also playing with the four Birds of Paradise, I have a little bit of ramping, but besides the ramping, I mean, look at all the different colors he's playing. He really needs those birds to produce the mana that he's looking for. And don't forget, Mie Jin and Bull Lightning each cost three red, so it's really red committed. And that's why it's so interesting to see a deck that's not mono red, but is playing these two creatures. That's something completely um, that I didn't expect. So it's going to be really interesting to see this deck in action. Of course, he also has his lightning bolts. And there we see the power as well to kind of give this deck a better chance to work. And I think time um, walk can be extremely painful when you have to play against this brew. Can you imagine him playing a bull lightning 
than playing a time walk, playing an anime dead on the ball lightning, or maybe putting even another ball lightning on the board. There's just, there are so many possibilities by this deck to just deal 20 damage in one turn. It's insane. So I'm really looking forward to kind of see this deck work. I also think the mana short is kind of a nice inclusion. I'm not quite sure why it's there, but I'm really curious to see if it can do anything in this matchup. Okay, so this is the deck of Dave. Now let's go and take a look at the deck of Rob. And here we see the deck of his opponent, Rob, and I've named the deck Ali at the Bull, obviously named after Ali from Cairo. There's a one-off in this deck. For the people that don't know what it does, it's a card from the Arabian Nights, uh, two red and two to cast, and it's an 0-1 creature, and it reads, while Ali is in play, damage that would reduce you to less than one life lowers you to one life. All further damage is prevented, so as long as Ali is on the board, you cannot die. So that's pretty cool, right? And of course, there are also four ball lightning. So that's why I thought, hey, let's call it Ali at the ball. Now, the cool thing about, well, there's, there are actually a lot of cool things about this deck because it's not just your usual mono red aggro deck. Okay, you've, you know, you've got your vices, you've got your chain lightnings, ball lightnings, lightning bolts, disintegrates, all that. I mean, that's absolutely understandable. You also have bloodlust, which I think is really cool in here. Bloodlust, instant from legends, uh, one red and one. Target creature gains plus four, minus four until end of turn. And if this reduces creature toughness below one, creature toughness is one instead. So you can put a bloodlust on a ball lightning and you can deal 10 trample damage, right? So that's pretty powerful. But when I'm looking at this deck, the first thing I notice are just the two often trolls here. It's really cool. Um, you know, Rob's like, I'm playing at the often troll cup. I'm going to play with often troll. So I really like that. I love to see people doing that. And I know that Ron, the organizer of, the, of this event, is also a big fan of that. So... Rob, man, great choice. But on the other side of the alley, there's even a more interesting creature because um, you're playing with the Itwin Afrit. And this is a card from Arabian Nights for three red. And it is a three, six creature. And if you choose to block with the Itwin, um, you have to flip a coin. If you lose the flip, it actually cannot block. So this probably reminds you of a card that Dave is playing with because Dave is playing with um, with the brother of this card, I guess, the Mie Jin. So the Mie Jin is the 6-3, and this is the other flip of the coin, the other side of the coin, you could say, the 3-6. So it's really rare to see these cards actually being played and to have now a game where both of these cards are played. That's just insane. So I'm really looking forward to that. Another really cool creature in his deck is, I think, the Hurl Jackal. Now, Hurl Jackal is a card for one red. It's a 1-1. One -one. It's, I think, beautiful art by Drew Tucker. And what you can do, you can tap it to prevent target creature from regenerating for the remainder of the turn. I think that is pretty cool that he's playing with that. Thinking, hey, I'm playing at the often troll cup. I'm probably going to see a lot of trolls, such trolls, often trolls, whatever. And with her, jack her jackal, I can kind of turn that regeneration shield off. So I'm really curious to see um, how that's going to work. But when I think about it, I don't think Dave really has any regeneration creatures unfortunately in his in his deck so i think this matchup is not the best matchup for hurl jackal but uh i'm curious kind of how you did rob in the rest of the tournament with the hurl jackal so maybe if you're listening uh to this if you're watching this video let us know in the comments below how did the hurl jackal do um okay so this is the deck of rob super aggressive the deck of dave super aggressive so i think we're in for some really aggressive lightning going back and forth let's go to the games Game number one, and we've got Dave sitting on the left of your screen and Rob sitting on the right. And uh, Rob, you know, I like that art, but that play mat, man, I'm not sure if it's going to work with the camera, but we'll just have to uh, have to see. Uh, we see that nice life counter on the side of, uh, of Dave there, and there is a basic mountain by Rob, tapping it down, and he's playing out a Hurl Jackal, so that's a creature I was talking about. The 1-1, one you can tap to remove regeneration from a creature. Passing turn here to Dave. And there is a Taiga, ooh, and a Black Lotus. What is he gonna do? Well, we see a first turn Ball Lightning. And there's a Ball Lightning hitting Rappi for six turn one. This is <laughs> insane. Boom, down to 14. And this is the first time I've seen anybody using a Black Lotus to cast a Ball Lightning. I'm sure it's done before, but it's a first for me and I believe also a first here for the channel. So thank you, Dave, for that. And there is a Mishra's Factory by Rob attacking here with the Jackal bringing Dave down to 19. It might be a good idea for Rob to just keep one red open to deal with those uh, ball lightnings. There is a lightning bolt directly to the dome, to the face here. Rob going down to 11. Wow, so this is even before 
Davis taking on his second turn. That's just insane. There is a strip mine taking care of the Mishra's factory. And what I wanted to say is it might be a good idea for uh, for Rob to keep a lightning bolt in hand to possibly deal with a bull lightning, considering he's already on 11, playing another Mishra's factory, attacking again with the Jackal. So at least the Jackal is doing some work here. And there we see a chain lightning here by Rob. So he's choosing not to keep one red open. <laughs> and that is just insane. Another lightning bolt. So he's on eight now, and that means that Dave has dealt 12 damage, and he's now taking on turn number three. So wow, that's an average of four damage per turn. That's just insane. Let's see what damage he can do now. Oh, there's an enemy dead, of course, on the ball lightning. Now, enemy dead does take one point away from the power, so that's five damage here for Dave. Uh, done by Dave to Rob. Rob dropping to three here. That means he's only one chain lightning or lightning bolt away from losing this first game. This is just insane. Tapping and what is he going to do? I believe that's a black vice. Doesn't really do much at this point for uh, for Rob. Is he going to tap his red? He is tapping his red. Interesting bolt here to Dave's face, putting him on 10 and of course attacking him with the jackal as well. There are two, okay, two birds of paradise. That's kind of funny. So this is the first turn that Dave is doing no damage to Rob. So does that mean that, can, that Rob can kind of try to stabilize here? And look at that. He's attacking with everything he has. Why not? The Jackal and, of course, animating that Mishra's factory, attacking with it. And Dave is taking the damage there. He's on six himself as well. So both of these players can definitely still win, which is quite an achievement by Rob here. And I wonder if Dave's going to chum block now. There's another mountain by Rob. He's still got four cards in hand. I believe Dave is in, has a one card in hand. Attacking here with the 2-2 two -two and the 1-1. One -one. Is he going to chump here? I believe he's going to chump on the 2-2, two -two, taking a damage from the Jackal. The Jackal has, I think, already done four damage. It's pretty cool. And there is a regrowth, so... And he's regroving the bolt, and that's it, that's it. It took me a moment to realize, but of course he had the Birds of Paradise, and he had two mana to his disposal, so that was just enough to regrove the Lightning Bolt and cast the bolt on Rob. Wow. This, <laughs> I mean, I guess these are the games that you can expect with two of these hugely aggressive decks. Um, we'll let these players sideboard, and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, and I believe we see Dave here taking a mulligan, and Rob gets to start because he lost that first match. Um, I've, I'm sorry, that first game, which I think is a huge advantage here. You've got two extremely aggressive decks here playing each other, and when you can start as an aggressor, it's just fantastic. On the other hand, if you're on the draw, you get that extra card, and with these aggro decks, you can run out of gas real fast, so you can get your opponent down to, I don't know, nine or eight, and then you get stuck because you're, you're running out of cards. That being said, you know, Dave took a mulligan, so he's actually only starting with six cards in hand and drawing into number seven. So it's it's going to be tricky here for Dave. Definitely an advantage uh, for Rob here being and on the play and not taking a mulligan. So let's see what he can do. Will he have a turn one drop? And actually that, that Jackal did quite some work for Rob in game one. There we see a mountain, I believe it's an Arabian Nights mountain, and he's passing turn here. So no one drop. And that's actually really good news for Dave here. And there we see a City of Brass. And I think they're the World Championship editions with the Golden Border. And there we have a Mishra's Factory by Rob. So what is he going to do? You really expect him to play something. He's actually not doing it. So it's really a slow start for both of these players. If you compare it with game one, look at this. I guess uh, I guess Dave heard what I'm saying. Double mocks into a mind twist. This is pretty brutal. Of course, he's taking a damage here from his own city of brass, going down to 19. But this is bad news for, for Rob. And now he has to decide, for example, am I going to play out that lightning bolt for three damage? Or am I just going to let him discard my cards here? It all depends on how well you know your deck. Sometimes you think, okay, maybe it's better not to deal the three damage and just let him let him pick a card. And in some cases, I mean, Dave is still on 19, so it does make sense here that he's not doing it. If he has a bolt in hand, of course, I don't know. So picking three cards here, and those are the cards going into the bin. 
and uh, it, it's it's hard to see it's going way too fast i think is it going to show it now i see a mishra's factory is one of them also the camera quality is not too great i think a flower stone there could it be a flower stone don't believe he plays with that anyway uh, let's just continue with the game we're tapping three what is he going to cast there's an often troll so the two two regenerator oi 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 and that was one of the things that we had to shout out every time when an often troll got cast it's one of the things we do here at this tournament so really nice often troll and now there's the possibility will that bolt go on the troll and that's actually a good decision from dave because rob doesn't have the red open to regenerate it and look at that there is the juggernaut now it's going to be interesting to see what rob's going to do for example is he going to keep or is he just going to chain it here he's going to chain it okay i wanted to say he could keep his um mishra's factory open block it and tap it uh, tap it to pump itself and then trade it for the juggernaut but he doesn't have to make that decision he can just chain the jugger and attack here with the mishra's factory that means that dave is now on 16 and i mean he's not looking so strong despite the mind twist and i think again he's only got one card in hand running out of gas and Rob attacking again with the 2-2, dropping Dave here to 14, passing turn. So this game is going much slower than game one. Very interesting. And I think that Mind Twist really kind of helped Dave to buy him some time there. We see the first Bull Lightning of the game. And remember, Rob is also playing with, I believe, a playset of Bull Lightnings. And there is that Lightning Bolt on the Bull Lightning. Uh, I always find it odd that you can bolt a, a Bull Lightning, but okay. I think it's it's a good decision here from uh, from Rob to kind of keep that lightning bolt in hand to protect yourself against those bull lightnings. Although he's still on 20 now, and we see that Dave has dropped to 11 after another attack passing turn here. And again, just attacking, you know, things are going great for him. Will we see a lightning bolt or something? No, we see a shatter. Okay, that's actually quite nice because that means that Dave is only using a shatter here to destroy an artifact and not using any direct damage. He really wants to keep the direct damage to play directly on his opponent that's how his whole deck of course is built up and let's see rob is now in his second main phase and he's playing a chain lightning here and dave no he cannot send it back he doesn't have two red open so that would have been interesting if he would have chosen for example to use his mock sapphire and a red source to cast a cheddar he would have had two red sources to potentially uh play the chain back I'm not sure if he would have done that, though, because he's pretty low. He's on 8 right now. So you could say Dave's in trouble here. And look at Rob's life total. He is still safe at 20 life, so nothing's going on here. Dave isn't playing out a single thing. And here we see a Hammerheim tapping 4. And I believe this is a Juggernaut. Is that... It's hard to see, to be honest. Or is that a... Oh, it's an Ali from Cairo. Okay, that's pretty cool. It's hard to see because of the quality of the picture, but I believe it's an Ali from Kyrie. Also tapped for an Ali S4 in the casting cost. And there is a Bull Lightning by Rob. And look at the life total of Dave. Dave dropping to two here. Oh man, Dave is in serious trouble. And at least he's playing a trike. And the nice thing about trike is it can also protect, uh, protect Dave from Bull Lightnings because it can use those counters to ping instantly. So that is actually really good news for Dave. This is a really good draw. Oh, and then we see a disintegrate, and that means it's done. Okay, this is how these games go. If you're low enough and you're kind of in top decking mode, as soon as your opponent hits, direct damage is pretty much over. We saw that in game one. We're seeing that in game two. The only difference is that this time, Rob is taking the win here. That means it's 1-1, one, one, and that means we're going to game number three. Game number three. So this is the decider. Again, we see a mulligan by Dave here. Um, let me know in the comments below who you think is your favorite to win this. I wanted to say Dave because he's on the play, but now that he's taking a mulligan and he doesn't have a turn one, I think Rob has the best papers here. Starting with the Hurl Jackal on turn one, just like he did in game one. And there is a bad lance here by Dave. And actually a bad moon would kind of do a lot of work for... Uh, for Rob here against this deck, there's a Soul Ring. Is he going to cast an Off Control, which is one red and two? First, he's going to attack with the Jackal here, bringing Dave down to 19. And let's see what Rob's going to do. He is passing turn. Okay, so he's giving Dave some time here. Dave playing a City of Brass. Of course, that's something that Rob likes to see. I mean, 
if he hurts himself, that's good news. Going to 18, attacking here with the ball lightning. And no response from Robbie. He just has to take the damage. Going to drop down to 14. And will we see a third mountain from Rob as well? And possibly an attack by a ball lightning. Ooh, actually tapping something. And there is a Jalen Tome. So the little book. So he can tap that for two to try to find some more direct damage. And this is quite nice in these decks. Because you can trade your basic lands. Which you don't need a lot of. Although of course you've got the Disintegrate X spell. But you can trade those 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 excess lands for, for burn spells that are much more valuable. Um, but now the turn has been passed over to Dave playing a Volcanic Island. Four lands. Ah, and there we see the um, Mie Jin. That is pretty cool. So this is a 6-3 creature. So when you attack, you've got to flip. And if you lose the flip, you have to remove it out of combat. And here's the downside. It's still tapped. So... You've got a 50-50 chance of hitting six. It is a pretty big boy though. And it looks like Rob is now thinking if he wants to do something end step, possibly play a lightning bolt on that Jin. I wonder if he's gonna do that. Another option of course is for him to use the book. It all depends on his hand. He's doing neither. He is untapping here, drawing a card for turn. Looking at his options. He's got a pretty full hand, five cards, but I believe uh, Dave also has quite a lot of cards in hand still. There is a Chain Lightning on the Jin, so Jin's gone. Again, Dave doesn't have any mountains to shoot that Chain Lightning back. Attacking for one here with the Hurl Jackal. That means that Dave's now on 16, having four mana open here and just passing turns. So, interestingly enough, Rob doesn't have any more ammo to put on the board. There we see two mana tapped here. Animate that, getting back that ball lightning, swinging in for five. And we've seen him doing this in game one. He's doing it in game number three as well. And I believe that Rob is now going to drop to nine. And there was a little glitch here, but he's also playing a Birds of Paradise. Hmm. And there's some pressure here for Rob on the board now. And I must say that Animate that ball lightning is really looking good. I didn't think about it, but it's really looking nice. He's now using the little book, the Jaloon Tome, to draw one, and then he instantly has to discard. So he cannot first play something out and then discard. He has to draw and then discard. So he's looking at his hand now. What to do? Asking how many cards Dave has in hand, and it looks like he only has one card in hand there. And he's discarding a strip mine, it seems. Does that mean that he has pure gas in hand? Tapping three, will there be a ball lightning? There is a ball lightning attacking him for seven. Look at that life total of Dave Go. He's falling down to nine. Both of these players are on nine in a decisive game. So that's quite exciting. And uh, remember, it's a 1-1. One -one. This is game number three. This is the decider. And it looks like he's checking something with the life score. I do believe it's correct. Both players are on nine here. But, I mean, Rob is stepped out right now. Passing turn here. I believe one card in hand. Now two cards in hand for Dave after the draw step. Can he find something? If he has a bull lightning and a lightning bolt, it's over for Rob. But those chances are pretty minimal. Let's see. He's kind of in the tank here. There is a time walk. Okay, that is a pretty good draw. Unfortunately, he cannot combine it with an, atta an attack because he doesn't have any creatures with power on the on the board. Only has that Birds of Paradise. So basically what he does is he simply gets just one more draw step, digging a little bit further, so he kind of cycled away that card. And now he's passing turn. Oh my. Ooh, I like this. A mana short here. What mana short does is it empties your opponent's uh, mana pool it taps all the lands in the upkeep. So that means that if Rob wants to do anything with the lands, he can use it to, of course, activate his book. And this is interesting. He's going to activate his tome for two. And he's going to draw a card. Okay, so we're still in his upkeep, I guess. Untap upkeep, draw a card, discard a card. You really can't see what that, what that is. Then he has to tap everything. Wow, and that's that. 
Oh man, yeah, he is playing a mountain, but is this mana short actually giving the victory to Dave? Because it, it is really like a time walk. He played a time walk, but this is another time walk for him, really buying him time to dig for something powerful to play. Rob's being on nine. If he can find a Berserk and a Bull Lightning, this game is over. Enemy dead. Getting back a Bull Lightning. Attacking for five. Does he have a Berserk? Then he can finish it right here. And there's a double Berserk. Oh, man. <laughs> Dave, you are a cowboy, man. Wow. This is ridiculous. This is why we call your deck Double Down. This is just fantastic. Wow, Dave, thank you for bringing this deck to the Often Troll Cup. This is the kind of stuff we want to see. And also, I got to give credits here to, to Rob. You built a really cool deck. Three Herald Jackals. Fantastic. Not your, your general mono red deck. Wow, what a nice, nice aggro battle to, to watch. And, and usually when you're seeing two aggro decks against each other, it can be kind of whoever's luckier will win the game. That's it. Yadi yadi yadi. Quick games. Not very exciting. But Wow. This was just from the start all the way to the end. Fantastic match. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Rob. And also thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And now if you want to see more of the Often Troll Cup or if you want to know more about it, in the description below, you will find a link to Ron's Twitter and also to the Often Troll Facebook page. You can visit that and you can find out more about the tournament. And also here on the channel every week, I will bring you another match from the Upton Troll Cup all the way to the finals. So if you want to follow the tournament, you can do that right here on Timmy Talks. If you want to support the channel, you can also do that in well, actually quite a simple way. You can subscribe to the channel uh, by being a sub. You're showing YouTube how good my channel is. So you're really helping me out by doing that. It's free. So if you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe. Also, you can leave a like, you can leave a comment, all that helps. Also, click the notification bell. Um, let me know, by the way, who are you rooting for when we started at game three? Who did you think was going to win, Rob or Dave? Let me know in the comments uh, below. Now, you can also sponsor Timmy Talks financially by becoming a patron, and you can do that via Patreon. So, there's probably an info card appearing right now. Click on that link, that will bring you to take you to Timmy Talks. Patreon page and there you can find out how you can support the channel and also you can see what we do on the Patreon page. We've got a Discord, we have tournaments, uh, we've got prizes. We, we just do tons of stuff and um, it's, it's, it's growing so that's quite nice. Talking about Patreon, um, let's go to the end scroll and let's check out the amazing, fantastic, super cool and just badass magic players that support uh, Timmy Talks. Let's go and take a look at the end scroll and let's take a look at the channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het als fikker te somber gezien.